This is DG Vision Network. And uh, have a wonderful panel this afternoon. Who's going to look at a topic um, which has to do with that connects all of us? It's something that um, connects you and I, whether in the private sector, uh, private, uh, private sector, individual, in whatever sector you belong. But the meeting to adopt already established protocol because of our time, so I can move faster. You can see I have a very large house on the panel. So, gentlemen and ladies, I want to welcome you to this panel and say, um, for the next 20, 25 minutes we have, we're going to discuss driving sustainable transformation through digitization. Driving sustainable transformation through digitization. This topic affects every sector of our economy. Whatever sector you play in today, I can tell you that this topic affects you. But first of all, I want to start by us in the way of definition. Let me start with um, let me go to let me go to the university. Let me go to the university. So this is a combination of calm and down. So you see, it's a complete it's a complete uh, panel. Calm and down. That is just university and industry meeting together. But definition, we know that when we get definition first. So please, man, please. This transformation, how can you define it for us? What does it mean for you? This is transformation. Thank you. Digital transformation. Yes. How do I put it? In simple, in simple, uh, in simple terms, digital transformation. Transformation means changes. Changes, metamorphosis, digital, enabled by technology. So changes, or, yeah, changes, transformation, yeah. Um, digital means technology, the technology. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So let me hear from you, digital transformation. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Digital transformation, right? Yes. Has to do with adapting those processes required to actually change a particular process or a system by the use of computers and internet. You know, so something as, maybe to put it into context, something as that we see as being simple, as converting our hard documents into documents that you can have in the cloud or store in your computer. Is a simple digital transformation. Maybe that would be seen to be the fundamental, maybe something very, very common. Or maybe the NIN program that the government embarked upon, at least to get the population of Nigeria for us to be digitally you know, put into a database. That's also a digital transformation journey. Thank you so much. Let me get to someone who is engaged in the, in the blockchain world. So tell us from the perspective of the blockchain uh, ecosystem. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, digital transformation coming from the real estate industry is uh, quite a phenomenon in the past decade. Say three years ago, or, uh, or three years ago, we were the um, smart cities, smart offices, and smart offices. In the field of I IoT, that's Internet of Things, how you can connect sensor, the sensor is used to connect devices and um, the operations of everyday people. That's your office, your home, and even in your car. How can you connect your car to your office and to your, to your home? How can you be in the office and your house can be preset to wait for you, prepare for you, and do everything for you? So that's the digital transformation. And from the blockchain perspective, we are talking about uh, tokenization, which is fractional investment in real estate. That is backed in blockchain. We all know blockchain comes with security and, um, and the democratization, the democratization of processes where people can um, invest seamlessly and then they can vote their voting rights into this process, which is um, a kind of reform in the industry, which is very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let me get to you. Thank you so much. Please, I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. 
foundation. We have laid the foundation now. So let's start building on it for a business. Thank you. When we think about businesses, businesses are not run by machines, primarily. So we're looking at how can we use systems, how can we set up processes that can, one, make the work easier, and then two, increase revenue, and then three, reduce cost. So when you think about businesses, think about how, what are the things that I can put in, in place to be able to help me save more money or make more money or increase the efficiency of my staff. So, and then that's where you now have all the different tools. So whether you're ranging from communication with your team or with the customers or prospects or leads, or you're thinking about how to you know, protect or what things you can do on the back end to ensure that some things are automated so that your staff is able to do multiple um, activities or get more things done when certain things are automated. So for instance, if you already have a lead process in, in place for when someone lands on your website, but the email is captured, there's an email sent to them, and then you know you already have that. It's a repetitive process. You, so nobody has to go and start doing it. Once you set it up, it's all set and done. So thank you, thank you. Let me get to the GRB. Thank you. Please, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Motivation to actually carry out 
the major objective of that transformation. There is no transformation. We've said something about money, we've talked about R&D, we've talked about trying to define us moving from where we were before, which is normal transformation. You know, like we had clocks, we had a numbering system, now we're moving to computers, doing our jobs and making sure that we back them up. Uh, you know, when it's a block form, when information is in block form, you may not be able to pass through the door. When it's in liquid form, and this is not marketing, when it's in liquid form, we can pass through almost anything. We need to begin as a country to focus on infrastructure. Apart from the process, or sorry, part of the process, we need to look at infrastructure. Someone mentioned power, electric lift, and utility. If we do not get these infrastructures right, they will hinder the transformation. Imagine me in Eket trying to sell maybe fish to someone in Lagos. Knowing fully well there's another business that actually can transport that fish from Eket to Lagos seamlessly at a fee that is conditioned or available or suitable to the average end user. Then that would have been digitally transformed now. I'm talking of a farmer who wants to sell yam in a one village in Kaduna or who wants to sell sugar in one place in Chokoto to someone in another country entirely. But because there is digital transformation, he or she can easily go to a platform online, place this um, whatever material they need to sell, somebody else picks it up, and there's a process that makes sure that that thing moves from one hand to the other, either by rail, by road, or by hand. So as a country for transformation, in the future of the country, we must be ready to play our role. It's not all about government. Thank you, everybody has a lot of time. Thank you, but if I give you time, it's more about you can be talking. Let me get to the Nigerian side of engineers. You know, there's one, sometimes we see projects given and, um, and we hear that uh, those projects, most of most time, oftentimes, are interpreted by foreigners. Um, I want to know what is happening in the society. What are you doing in the period of digital transformation? Uh, I wanted to narrow it down to the issue of uh, collapse of buildings, uh, sometimes projects of government processes have failed, IT projects have failed. Uh, what are the things you are doing in this area? What are you, how, are you, how, how are you allowing digital transformation to impact the society and the members? So that at least you see when we build a project, you know that we are sure that that is not going to fall. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just start by saying that engineers have uh, gone far into uh, advanced digital operations and processes. And what I feel like that is, before now, there are so many remote ways of how we do things. But today, it's a lot more different. You will find out that we are concerned about the quality of what we do, uh, the cost, and the time. I'm taking the, those three points to uh, go through three different industries that I've worked in oil and gas, manufacturing, and uh, construction. Before I will now finally answer your question, uh, when you look at PIM, the construction industry, uh, now, it's allowing people to expand shit on it because we may not understand. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, the remote way to which we were doing things before uh, have advanced, and the PIM is a software uh, that is used in construction, or the soft uh, that we use in designs are advanced. These are driven by digital uh, technologies that saves time, you know, saves costs. And then the quality of the jobs are quite very, very obvious and categorical. Uh, then, so when you look at uh, optimization in manufacturing, you find out that a lot of operation in unlocked manufacturing processes have been uh, digitized, you know, you understand. And uh, you have a lot of uh, machine relationship called ergonomics. You know, uh, the relationship between man and machine is ergonomics. And then uh, you find out that because of the robotic nature, which is driven by digital advancement and information technology as it were, you find that a lot of processes in the manufacturing industry are automated. So operations are given and actuated and transferred by another operation. 
to perform the function and then you get a result. Yeah, and this one also before. We are talking of we are talking of we are not even talking of first engineering of the glory of revolution, we are talking of third, fourth, and we are driving to the fifth. Now when you come to uh, when you come to NEPs, we are talking of mechanical electrical and maybe don't be works. You find that there's a lot that's happened in the industry and then you don't just need the technician to just walk into a space and begin to crack some things. There are some things you can do technologically to understand. If I want to measure the distance, that I will be here and have a device that will tell me the distance from here to that place. If I have to take my table, or what I'm doing, you see, begin to, somebody will stand there, wasting of manpower, wasting of time, and a lot of things. So I will just know the equipment, I will measure the distance between here and there, and I have my body. I will also be there, I will record it digitally, as it were. There are some that will record it from my laptop, as it were. So what we are saying here, to run it up is that for the building collapse, I did a report on building collapse when I was reporting on the uh, when I was uh, when I was reporting with uh, Dr. Bayero. Uh, I did a very comprehensive report on the uh, collapse of building. And you say look uh, as they have now, they are also more advanced because the rules, the regulations that govern the activities is more robust and more pointed. So you cannot just go and do anyhow. You must have your permits. So you find out that, as it were in the most case, most of the system that said, building collapse have actually gone down. The rate that it has gone down. So it's because of this kind of innovation that have come into being, you understand, as it were. And these are continuum. These are things that will continue to go, up, to go on and on. And then we can just uh, imagine what will happen if we continue to drive it. There are more to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for what has taken from this conversation. He telling us that in Lagos State, Lagos State, you can say goodbye to the last building. Can we give a round of applause? Yes, that was it. Telling us in essence. Let me let me get to another day. You know, at the base of digital transformation is cyber security. As you are planning or thinking on what to do, some other persons are there to, trying to, or planning how to thwart your plans. Um, at what time should a company think about cyber security and the journey of this transformation? Thank you so very much. Um, I think it's from the get-go, right from the beginning. Because, um, like Ruth has mentioned, we see that we need to look at our people, we need to look at our processes, we need to look at infrastructure as well as technology. So right from the get-go, cyber security should be considered because we need to also look at risk as it affects all these people. So you have the risk to infrastructure, you have risk to technology, you have risk of the people themselves, and then you have risk that affect the processes. Um, my friend in real estate had mentioned things about IoT and smart cities, smart devices, smart homes, and all of that. So it's very important right from the get-go. You know, we were laughing at a scenario where we think said, okay, what happens if you had voice recognition in your smart home? and you go home and you maybe after a night out with your friends, your voice had changed and you were locked out of your home and you had forgotten your phone in the car or something like that and your phone was locked in the car. So it's very important. You can see the risk already that's in the painting. And the only reason why you decided to have a smart home was also to be able to protect yourself, provide some level of security for yourself. So it's important right from the get-go to implement all the cyber security tools necessary. And um, I'd like to say, I keep saying awareness, awareness, awareness. So this is very important for our processes. We need to be aware. Um, we need to retrain our people, especially when we're bringing in new technology. And it's important to know that technology will keep evolving. So there are a lot of emerging technologies that are coming into place. So it's important for us to note right from the get-go, like I said, cyber security is important. So we need to think about it once we want to start the digital transformation process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Papas. So let me come to you, sir. Uh, thank you for where questions just talked. Emerging technologies are adopting that for digital transformation and um, tied into the economy. Um, what do you think is a culture an organization should will have? Or at what point do you think organizations should think or see that, that it's time for us to begin to transform or transform our processes. There is time for us to move. If we don't move, 
we just stopped or we're going to die off here. At what point do you think? Well, for those who have not moved yet, they are already left behind. So at what point is now? So the moment you get to know, that's the point to move. I'm from the media industry. I set up radio and TV stations. And the truth about it is that any station that does not go digital, that is not digital today, is actually losing like 60 to 70 percent of their income. So it is immediately, everything has moved online. If you take the audiences now, for instance, in countries where you have good internet um, coverage, this year, 2023, um, TV viewership has gone down to just about two hours in a day. And if I check all of us here, ask ourselves, how many times do we watch TV? How many hours do we spend watching TV in a day? We're on, 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 on our phones. So it has to be immediately. Audiences have gone there. So for the media people, you need those audiences to make money. And for everybody that is here, you need the media, you need those need the audience to pass information to them. If you take this show now, started by Oga uh, Bayero years ago, it's true it show that most of the technological people we know today were made known. They made it by being shown, you know, through the media. It's through the media that what the NCC is doing and all those others are being known. So without the media taking it up immediately, no other sector can even move. So in addition to what he said, please give a round of applause. If you are just in, uh, at the corner of your office building something fantastic and you are not trying to come out to speak in the media, you are winking in the dark and you are not going to progress from that. So that's what I'm trying to tell you that you have to be in the media. At the points of it, at, at the process, add media, add publicity to what you're doing. So let me come to you, sir. Now let's get more real. As we are here in this room, some people, some young people in this room are thinking, should I Java? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I stay? Naira, how much? To a dollar? What should I do? Should I go? Should I stay? So I want to start with you, sir. This is kind of, this could be the last question I'm going to, I'm going to ask, but it's something dear to my heart. The skills we need to drive digital transformation, have we not shipped those skills abroad? I know that all of us here are talented. I don't know about the young people coming after us. Have we not shifted the, the skills abroad? What can we do to retain the skills? And for those who are here who have decided to stay, what should they do to do what to get involved in the process of digital transformation? Let me start with you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let me start by saying that uh, about 10 years ago, when I started uh, the business that I do, uh, I had about three partners. Uh, one was my uh, legal advisor, the other one was more like my CTO, and uh, I can tell you for free now that two of them are already, uh, they have already got back, you know. So I'm the only one left in the country. And on a daily basis, I receive you know, messages from my friends, from my family saying, guy, what are you doing in that country? I mean, there are better opportunities for you over here, you know, in the uh, Western world. But, you know, I am, you know, this kind of person that believes so much in Nigeria, and uh, I, I strongly believe that uh, there are adequate, you know, uh, you know, manpower to, you know, effectively execute or implement the, these processes. Uh, and uh, uh, for me, uh, I've said it at uh, different fora that have been that uh, what I think that we should advocate for is uh, you know there, there needs to be uh, a national institute that uh, train you know our youth on some of these uh, technologies, especially emerging technologies. You know, we talk about IoT, we talk about VR, virtual reality augmented reality uh, and the likes. So if our youths are you know, well informed, they are well trained about this, and then there are incentives, you know, the, the, not only the government, even the private sector, there has to be incentives you know, for driving you know, these uh, initiatives. So if you know that, okay, if you have a job in this area, 
you earn maybe times two, times three than some other professional in some other areas. You know, our youth will be more inclined to want to take a profession in that area, and then we can then the issue, the problem of shortage of manpower will then be a thing of the past. So I think that we can, you know, you know, you know, look at it from that uh, direction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, I want us to record that uh, sometimes during the Buhari administration, he signed an executive, executive order. 10, I think, whereby you, as an engineer, a foreigner cannot just take over construction sites. If I have a company, you must have a registered engineer on the board. And then, if you have an Italian or anybody from any part of the world, the best is not going to be the heat engineer on the project. It has to be an engineer. I try to work with the local content as it were. And for companies that are near that opportunity, they are thriving, you know. Everything is not bad in Nigeria for me, as it were, as it was of now. Because if you know, then you can act. When you are not informed, you are back. So you don't blame anybody for that. So for me, that has worked for my companies. Like I told you, I work in all and gas for years, manufacturing, service, provision company, and MEP. So definitely I know what is sustainable. Now, uh, the challenge two things here, policy framework. You see, we've talked about it, it have been in forum where we talk about policy framework. We have research institute and PhD students, and you find out that it, they said there's no grant. There are grants for research, R&D, in our universities. I can tell you for free. I want to give it, I'll give it data. I'm sure Dr. knows too. But where these grants, what are they meant for? Are they using them for what they are meant for? The results from this research, where are they packed? Go to Firo. I went to Firo, do one of our tours, and I went by, I was crying. And like I was, I went to one corner, I was like, I was very, very sad, as it were. You know, I don't want to go into that. But what I mean is that, Firo, you know what Firo was supposed to do? Yeah. They are not doing it. They have a lot of research, missionaries, and what have you. Even 5G printing. We are talking of 3D. We are talking of 5G that China is operating on now. They have it. They are, they are there. What's happened to it? Now, policy framework, labor policies are there. Why are they not working? There are policies that can work. Forget, I can tell you for free anywhere in the world. I can start to anybody that policies made in Nigeria. There are policies that if truly really will work. So we have a gap that all of us have been talking about. You understand? And the corruption and what have you. Then you are talking of insecurity. You see, so many people don't know so many things, including me, because I know a part. But the issue is this when an environment is not conducive, nobody comes there. You can't ask me to go to Bonon and go and establish an engineering company. I will not go. Where will I go? I just I want to go and expose myself to death. Even I have the skills. I won't. So we are talking about insecurity whereby it's a phenomenon. You cannot strive in a situation where you are not secured. So the first thing is to secure the environment. And then on a final note, you see Jaguar syndrome or what have you. We are not patient. There's no patience enough. Nobody wants to long suffer. Nobody wants to wait. We want to make there's nothing like that. Look at developed economies. They have process. Okay, there's there's more. There are processes. Sorry, there are processes. There is from one state to you don't jump. You don't count your seven before your six. You take it from one, two, three, and go to length. We want to take our seven before our six. It's not done. Anybody you see my family lives in Canada. I want to believe that because I feel that that's maybe the very but I'm here. Apart from the segregation, apart from the apart, 
You understand what I mean? There's nothing that I'm regretting. Nothing. Thank you so much, sir. So then, you. then you talk of consistent development. You talk of consistent. Okay, not. I want to respond. But well, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let's have a catch them young um, mentality. Uh, we we'll definitely all around the world. We have a shortage of cybersecurity experts. It's not just in Nigeria; it's all over the world. So it's important for us to quickly start to build interest in our children. So let's catch them young. Let's make digital skills also available across board for everybody. And uh, I mentioned to Akibo earlier what uh, the Internet Security, uh, the Internet Society is doing, providing you know internet. Irrespective of your age, your class, your status, that is available. So let's learn digital skills. And um, they had mentioned government intervention and government incentives. Those are the things that are written down and also to provide that anyway. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, because I'm, I'm a technology person. Yes. And uh, my takeaway for government to embrace technology. A lot of societal problems can be solved through technology. We don't need last mile to vote. We don't need both this on the we don't need uh, FRS or anybody on there. The camera will pick me if I commit any offense. Period. You, I cannot compromise them. I cannot bribe the camera. So this is what we need to solve society. Thank you so much. Yes. My last was focused on vision for where do we actually want to go? The truth is, when we think about countries like Singapore, countries like UAE, if we look 30 years now, they were not where they are now. It's because many of our administrations think of themselves. You see that for your eight years and that's it. If we have a long term vision as to where do we actually want to take Nigeria to, it doesn't have to stop with me. It doesn't have to have my name on it. Like, it's Nigeria. It's about Nigeria. Where do we want Nigeria to go? And how can we handle all our different, you know, our different potentials, our skills, our expertise to be able to build that? And then secondly, we then need to de diversify our education. Everything doesn't have to be primary school, secondary school, university. We have vocational schools, we can equip them. We can then include these digital transformations as, as little as five, six, seven. There are kids that are very smart. We should support them and then create those things and create the remuneration. Because when people are getting to be hired, we hear that if you don't have a BSc, you're not going to be hired. So we should, if we create alternative forms of of the remuneration such that you have a different pathway and you are remunerated properly. Many people who are going abroad are not really going abroad to get collar jobs, but just because they're going to get better pay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. So I will be speaking, uh, wrapping up our meeting with uh, the two others that uh, really affect real estate, which is funding and um, collaboration. Funding among uh, for real estate. Real estate developers should leverage tokenization, and even government should leverage tokenization in the sense that we can drive PPP. That's public private partnerships within that space where we can create a smart contract that uh, the masses can leverage on, and the governments can leverage on, and we can even build mass uh, housing uh, the projects because we are already we have we have about 20 million housing services in Nigeria. So looking at it from that that is we can we can do more. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So on this note, we hold it today. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. At the corner where you are, make a change there. Thank you so much. For more on well-researched and balanced stories, events and interviews across business, tech innovation and lifestyle, please like, share and subscribe to this channel, www.youtube.com slash digivationnetwork.